Welcome to this video where we are going to build a search feature in Bubble, the no-code tool, and we're going to utilize this app here uh, that's in another video actually if you want to check out it's free uh, to build this yoga app um, on just follow the links in the description. But basically, you know, when you have a big repeating group of a bunch of data and people want to search for that, you can offer filters such as these pre-made ones in this uh, particular case. Uh, this repeating group repeats out these uh, uh, you know these classes for for yoga but imagine that you had a long 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 list much longer than this and you wanted to build the search feature in this video you're gonna learn how so to do that we're gonna go over to our bubble editor and we're just simply going to first off we're gonna do we're gonna build the input search box and then we will uh, set it up so real quickly I'm going to just update the positioning on some of these items and then we'll get going and get a search box up so uh, what we're going to do, uh, we're going to start with our containers group. And we're just going to draw in a group here, and we're going to call that uh, group search bar. And then we're going to give it the dimensions. 280 is good, uh, 38 actually, and then 20. Uh, but we, actually, we want to do a thing center horizontally so that it lays out nicely in the various uh, different screen sizes. And that's looking good. For the background, go ahead and give it a flat color and then 242424. Four, two, four. We just want to have something that's styled pretty nicely uh, with a roundness of 20. Okay, so with that, we're going to utilize this thing, Material Icons. It's a plugin that's installed. Uh, just simply go to Plugin, search for Google Material Icons uh, if you are attempting to follow along. If otherwise, you know, this is also a great video to just watch and absorb, you know, the, the information so that you can see uh, which parts you want to take and potentially use in your app. So we're just going to grab a search icon here and we're going to make this something like that for a color and we're going to give it an x value of 11 and then center that vertically within the search box okay cool so this is kind of just the design portion not really much going on here now we're going to get to the real part where we take an input form which is the search box that people will type in so we'll put that into here and for this placeholder we'll say search class you know if you're building something for whatever it is that the people will be searching for I'd recommend you put you know just that word of what they're searching for here and the input uh, let's see everything kinda out of the box is, is fine uh, we're gonna remove the styling because we're gonna play with this a little bit we're gonna go 240 by 35 for the height and our x value we're gonna get 40 and then 0 for the y we actually want it up a little bit because just of how um, you know the, it lays out so it actually lays out um, in a good position okay so we're gonna remove the background and we're gonna go 14 for our font size and then whoops, keep a right align there and then let's see for our color we are gonna go 9999999 okay uh, with that set up now this input search class uh, we're gonna go ahead and just take away these conditionals uh, not a huge thing let's see the borders um, order width we can change that to one you know because this input is we're actually using the we're going to remove this because we're using the styling of the other one we're just going to take that away and then we're also going to be sure to take away this border okay cool so that's looking pretty good there and but now um, so what happens when someone searches this I'm going to show off here is kind of a traditional way to do some search uh, you know working with a repeating group and having it so basically let's look at the data first off that just searches for um, this repeating group not super important to know about you're gonna have your own repeating group right for whatever you decide to make the important things to know about is you're gonna be searching for a particular data type of your data type you're gonna have a data source um, not important what this one is particularly filtered by uh, it that just allows it to be filtered by categories um, but what we want to do is we want to actually have this conditional that when what's the value of this it's input search class so we want to have this conditional set up when input search class is value is not empty meaning somebody's searching for something right then we want to change the data source and so typically uh, how this works for out of the box with bubble is you do search for all the data that you want to display and then you add this constraint where it's like okay someone's searching for something and the t and it contains these keywords uh, that are in let's see this input search classes value right so let's take a look at how this works here in the live app
Okay, so we can see a nice search box there, and we can see that we can go in here and we can type. So we've got uh, we've got some things. We got vertical. We got beach. Uh, we can let's let's go and search for these going vertical. Okay, so there was a there's quite a pause there, and then it did it did get us going. You know, with only <laughs> two letters from geo. But now let's try and search for one of the meditation ones. Okay, nothing. Okay, nothing. Still nothing. Okay, yeah, so that, you know, from a user standpoint, med did, wow, yeah, it's just really, you almost have to fill in the whole word there. So that's not something that we really want to, uh, you know, show off to our users. What we want to do then is we're going to use browse over to your plugins area, click add plug plugins, do a search for fuzzy, and add this uh, fuzzy search and autocomplete by zero code. These guys do a great job. They have tons of plugins, tons of stuff. Recommend you check them out. Okay, so uh, once that is installed, head back over here to your design area, and under visual elements, you will see the search and autocorrect. So you want to grab one of these, drop it onto the page, and you know just anywhere. Uh, it won't actually show it up and be visible. So what you want to do here is you want to take the data type of whatever type you're working with. Here we're working with yoga classes, and the source of it is we're going to do a search for uh, all these yoga classes. And basically, once somebody starts searching for stuff, we're going to have them search the title. There's potentially other options. You know, uh, a class could have maybe you know uh, a teacher associated with it, or maybe you know you're searching through something that has a bunch of projects, right? And projects have titles. Maybe they also have team members or something like that. And so uh, maybe you have uh, like a team manager or something like that, for, or a project manager that you would also, so you could set up a couple of these, it's definitely an option, and then you want to go ahead and just select this, set text to match uh, from an input box, because that's going to be from this one, and we'll tie these two together, and we'll do that by doing this fuzzy search, we'll just kind of make up a thing here, uh, fuzzy search plugin. So this has an input up box ID here, and then you want to come down here to the ID attribute on this input search box, and you want to set fuzzy search plugin uh, just like this, so that exact same one, make sure uh, character by character is exactly the same. Now, if you do not see an ID attribute thing here to put this in, you want to navigate over to settings, go to general, and then look underneath, just look for uh, the fave icon, whether it's this bubble one that has not been set up for this particular app or you already have one, and then this expose option to add an ID element to HTML attributes, make sure this is checked. So that will get you uh, this ID attribute if it's not showing. Okay, so with that showing, now We've got these two connected, this this item here. Uh, actually, there's one more setting on here, this threshold. We're going to go put this at 0.3. Uh, it's a good one for, let's see, like if you have it like 0.1 or 0, you know, that's like really low. It's like you could search like A, and it's like, guess what? Meditation has an A in it, so we're going to, you know, show meditation. Or if you put it at 0.9, then you might have to type meditate, you know, like we did with our other example of the out-of-the-box searching. So 0.3 is a pretty good one. Uh, and then we're going to come over here, and we're going to edit this data source now to, we're going to clear that expression. Well. I guess we just wanted to clear the uh, thing. Okay, so we want to dun, 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 go to search and autocorrect A's matches. So we want to, this this element is called search. We could actually call this, you know, maybe something better, like uh, fuzzy element search and autocorrect A or something so that, uh, yeah, it's easier to find or we know what it's called. Okay, but with that set up, that's the important part. Those are the important steps is to have all of these settings here on this searching for title uh, because title is what we are using for you know a yoga class but yours again might be something different it might be a project or it might be um, you know I don't know job application people or you know who's the person handling it or who's the person who's the applicant and so you'd want to connect those fields together but now here we can look and type you know me and we get meditation and look how fast that was we take go going vertical uh, for this so this is a great way to implement search into your app. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a like. Uh, subscribe, subscribe to our channel, and you will get updates on new videos that come out that teach tutorials on how to build stuff in Bubble. So hope